Hello everybody, today I am going to deliver lecture 3 of module 1. In the last lecture, I have discussed about the uh, response of a system subjected to harmonic excitation. Today, my topic will be focused on this time response of a linear system subjected to arbitrary input. So, in that connection I will discuss a simple oscillator system and also a system with several finite number of degrees of freedom. Okay. Because for understanding of continuous system, you require to have good background of the multi degree freedom system that is system with finite number of degrees of freedom. Because in any continuous system, the very common method of solution is to decouple the equation of motion into generalized coordinate, which can have similar characteristics of the single degree freedom system. And then knowing the, uh, the formulation of the single degree freedom system that, that are the fundamental of the vibration topics, we can easily go forward for obtaining the complete solution of the continuous system. Now, let us discuss this uh, system subjected to arbitrary input. So, in that case, I will uh, divide the lecture into different subgroups. First, I will discuss the general approach for the time domain analysis for arbitrary excitation and this method can be applied to a simple oscillator that is uh, HDF system or it can be applied to multi degree freedom on even continuous system when these are transformed into that of ordinary uh, this differential equations. Now, after doing this the time domain analysis due to arbitrary excitation requires the help of an impulse response function. So, that I am going to derive for undamped and damped system. Then I will give examples of step input with the help of this generalized approach. Then I will discuss the time domain analysis of coupled system with some numerical example. Okay. So, in arbitrary excitation again in the linear system, the system is supplied with a input that is a time varying force or even under the initial condition. Then the system will respond and we collect the output record the output. The system response is governed by the system parameters m c mass uh, damping constant as well as the stiffness properties and also it will reflect the characteristics of input since it is a it is a linear system. Okay. Now, when the system is subjected to such an input the system will undergo transient vibration but such vibration is not steady state. Only steady state vibration occurs if the system is uh, subjected to harmonic excitation, but it is not steady state if the input is non periodic. So, that we have to remember, but it will undergo a transient uh, oscillation initially that will decay depending on this uh, damping properties and uh, then it will uh, take up the characteristics of the input signal. In the time domain method, the particular integral is conveniently determined by convolution integral. I have shown you that uh, earlier also the response is actually nothing but convolution of input force with the impulse response function. Now, this type of formulation is derived by Duhamel and it is popularly known as Duhamel integral. And this method is useful for computer application for finding the response to structure subjected to ground motion which is irregular, especially in case of earthquake ground motion or any type of excitation. So, it is called a generalized method because even if you apply to this earthquake ground motion history. Then also we can use the Duhamel integral in a step by step manner. So, general solution again will consist of two parts one is homogeneous solution 
another is particular integral. Now, impulse response function is the basis for obtaining the response of a system subjected to generalized uh, arbitrary input. So, for example, here it uh, impulse is shown at a time instant tau on the time axis t and the magnitude of the impulse is f cap. So, it is defined as f t d t where d t integration is done for a very small interval of time. Now, here as epsilon that is the interval on which the impulsive force acts approaches 0, then in that case f cap by epsilon becomes an infinite quantity. However, impulse defined by the time integral is always bounded. So, we have to formulate the problem in such a manner say this remain bounded. Now, when the magnitude of the impulse is unity, it is called an unit impulse or a delta function in the limiting sense as epsilon approaches 0. Okay. Now, let us see what is this delta function or sometimes it is called direct delta function also. Uh, it is uh, symbolized by this uh, delta curly delta and suppose here a delta function or a discrete excitation is uh, located at time instant t is equal to tau. So, delta t minus tau is 0 for all other t except t is equal to tau. So, for t is equal to tau it is very high value greater than any assumed value for t is equal to tau. However, the property of the direct delta function makes it bounded in such a way that when f t is a time function integrated with uh, direct delta function uh, in the limit considered from infinite to plus infinity. Here, because our time axis starts from 0, infinite time has no physical significance. Of course, for shifting of uh, the origin, we can take it to the infinite domain, but normally the time uh, lower limit starts from 0. So, f tau integration with the direct delta function t minus tau that means the impulse is situated at t is equal to tau. Then if I integrate it with uh, the limit 0 to infinity, the value of the integral will remain as this uh, f t that means only the value of the integral that is uh, available at this instant. For example, we have a uh, force forcing function say t square plus 1 say a forcing function is like that a parabolically force and uh, constant magnitude force acting on the system. Then when we integrate such a force with a direct delta function t is equal to say direct delta function is now discrete force is at a t is equal to 2 second. Okay. So, delta t minus 2 d t and any limit you consider 0 to infinity, the value of the integral will be just your f t will be replaced by 2 and if we evaluate this function at putting t is equal to 2, then the value of t square that is 2 square plus 1 is equal to 5. So, you have understood this uh, application of direct delta function which simplifies the calculation in many cases especially when the discrete type of excitation exists in case of continuous system for example, a bridge and a moving wheel is uh, there which is changing its position at every instant that in that case concentrated force can be represented by direct delta function. Okay. Now, impulse response function is defined as the response of a single degree freedom system subjected to unit impulse. It is called impulse response function and uh, we have a simple system. Okay simple oscillator without damping. We are not considering damping at this instant, 
say we are considering only this this mass with steam stiffness spring and it is placed on roller so that it can move horizontally without friction okay and the degrees of freedom is only in this uh, horizontal direction so it is defined by xt okay time instant and uh, also a force time varying force is acting so such a system has equation of motion that is described by mx double dot plus kx equal to ft now if i want to find out the impulse response function for this system what i will do i will first solve the free vibration equation of that that means i take ft equal to 0 taking ft is equal to 0 i have this equation and the solution of this is now known to us as x is equal to a sin omega n t plus b cos omega n t where omega n is the natural frequency it is root k by m ok. So, now this is given here the x t is equal to a sin omega t plus b cos omega t omega n t omega n is the natural frequency. So, free vibration solution is obtained under the condition that impulsive force causes only the change in velocity and there is no displacement due to action of impulsive force. So, therefore, putting uh, the initial condition at t is equal to 0 deflection x is 0. So, we get directly that b is equal to 0. So, b is equal to 0 is confirmed here we get. Now, we take the change of uh, velocity that is uh, the change of momentum will give you the impulsive force and impulse is unity. So, in that case m into x dot 0 that is the initial velocity and body was at rest initially. So, that is the change of momentum. So, from there we get the x dot the initial velocity as omega n into a n. Therefore, a n equal to the other constant of integration equal to 1 by m omega n. Okay. So, therefore, the impulse response function H t is now defined for undamped system as 1 by m omega n into sin omega n t. So, this is very important function because uh, for undamped system we encounter and also idealization in case the damping is very small we can make a quick solution or obtain a quick solution assuming the damping. But it is not that that uh, for undamped system only the impulse response function exists, we now derive the impulse response function for the damp system. We consider a damped oscillator including damping dashpot. So, model is this, this is spring and then dashpot is also there which represents the viscous damper. So, mass is m and this is k c and this is the response x and force generalized force f t is acting f t is a generalized force ok. So, we are now interested to find this f t, but before that we are going to find this impulse response function. So, that this function aids in deriving the generalized response. So, f t is in general any arbitrary force ok. So, that is our main focus of today's discussion ok. So, for dam system now we get the response is given by e to the power minus j omega n t into a sin omega n t plus b cos omega d t omega d t. Here it is natural frequency without damping without damping, but here it is a damp natural frequency and you know that the damp natural frequency is related to undamped natural frequency by that relation. For small value of j, of course, the omega d is approximately equal to omega n. For small j, we can make this assumption omega d approximately equal to omega n. Okay. Now, the solution of x t is obtained. So, the velocity 
for the damped oscillator that is the first time derivative can be obtained after differentiating this expression with respect to time t. So, after differentiating we get x dot t equal to minus j omega n e to the power minus j omega n t bracket a sin omega d t plus b cos omega d t plus omega d t e to the power minus j omega n t into a cos omega d t minus b sin omega d t. Again we will apply the initial condition assuming that the impulsive force changes the velocity and there is no uh, change of displacement. So, at t is equal to 0 again our displacement is 0. So, we get b is equal to 0 and the change of momentum m into x dot 0 minus 0 that means, initial time we have taken at 0 second equal to 1 say this is the unit impulse. So, change of momentum equal to impulse and the magnitude of the impulse is taken as 1 unit impulse. So, therefore, the initial velocity comes out as again this initial velocity is j omega d a. So, the constant a now becomes 1 divided by m omega d. You can also write this in this way m omega n 1 minus j square by putting the expression for a n. Okay. Now, once you get this a the constant, now the impulse response function can be written for this the damped oscillator. So, it is given by this impulse response function is uh, this now this 1 by m omega d 1 divided by m omega d e to the power minus j omega d t sin omega d t. So, this is the response of a damped system subjected to unit impulse. So, this two expression for unit impulse whenever particular case will arise we will apply. Okay. So, one is for damped system and the another is for undamped system. Okay. Now, let us apply this unit impulse function to obtain the response of any arbitrary excitation case. That means, consider the system to be subjected to any type of force which is defined or uh, by arbitrary function not always may be uh, proper harmonic function or a quadratic function or a exponential function may be any arbitrary function. Okay. So, in that case we will take the help of impulse response function. Let us take this impulse which is situated at t is equal to tau and the duration for which impulse is acting is d tau. So, the impulsive force is f cap is equal to f tau d tau for this short duration of time. It contributes to the response at time t which is dependent on elapsed time t minus tau. So, actually the time is elapsed uh, here and any time after t minus tau also you will get the contribution of this impulse. So, that means, if I write the response elementary response due to this impulse then I denote it by delta a x t equal to f tau del tau that is the small interval of time into h t minus tau because the impulse force is situated here. So, after t minus uh, tau the response is given by delta x t equal to f tau delta tau h t minus tau. Since the system is linear and the exciting force is assumed to be composed of infinite number of such impulse or a finite number of such impulse, then if it is a finite number of such impulses, then we can write using the principle of superposition that x t is equal to summation of f tau del tau h t minus tau. Now, in the continuous assumption when delta tau approaches 0, then x t becomes integration of 0 to t f tau h t minus tau into d t. So, this is very popular integral which is known as Duhamel's integral. So, this is known as Duhamel's integral or convolution integral. 
and it has immense application in the structural dynamics or vibration of any system. So, hence the displacement of single degree freedom system with initial conditions and subject to any arbitrary forcing function now can be given. So, first we will write here this, this is what? This is your homogeneous solution and this is your particular integral. So, when you superimpose this two, you will get the uh, complete response that is the generalized response. Now, the constants a and b have to be found applying the initial condition on this expression, not on the expression of homogeneous equation, homogeneous solution alone. Remember this, the constant a and b should be determined after putting t is equal to 0 or whatever the initial time with the complete expression, not only the isolated expression that you take for homogeneous solution. Now, after getting a and b, we get the total response and this can be used for this finding other derivatives say first derivative will give you the velocity, second derivative will give you the acceleration. Now, let us discuss with an example of step input. For example, here you are seeing a single degree freedom system subjected to this spring constant k uh, subjected to f t uh, which is f t is a constant force. So, it is a step function, it is defined by a unit uh, step function which is given as f t is equal to p into u t, whose meaning is that u t is equal to 1 if t is greater than 0, otherwise u t is 0, step function is 0. So, we first take a undamped system and uh, we now evaluate the Duhamel's integral okay, for particular solution, because our uh, this uh, homogeneous solution is already known. So, according to Duhamel's integral, x t is equal to integration 0 to t f tau h t minus tau d tau. Okay. Now, instead of f tau, you put p and h t minus tau, because h t minus tau, h tau was h t, h t is the impulse assessment function for single degree freedom system undamped and it was like that. Okay. So, now uh, replacing t by tau here, we now write this, this x t is equal to p 1 by m omega n sin omega n t minus tau d tau. So, after carrying out integration, you can see that x tau x t is equal to minus p divided by m omega n square p, uh, p will be there in the numerator numerator this is the magnitude of the force and uh, after integration it becomes cos omega n t minus tau and the limit is t into t and 0. Okay. So, after evaluating the limit you will get this, but if you put this omega n square as k by m because this is the natural frequency then you will get m will get cancel and it will be p by k and p by k let it be static displacement. So, denoting p by k as delta s t we now get the total response uh, the response uh, to the step input as delta s t into 1 minus cos omega n t. Okay. So, this is the response of a system single degree freedom system subjected to step input and it is evaluated using the Duhamel's integral. Okay. If I want to show the graph of the step response, then you can and it is undamped, you can see it here, that is the static displacement line is this and you will see from this expression that p by k is the static displacement, but what can be the maximum amplitude? You can see that the maximum value of cos omega n t will be plus 1 or minus 1. So, if it is minus 1, then only it will add. So, when cos omega n uh, cos omega n t is equal to pi, then 3 pi, then 5 pi, you will get that cos omega n t is minus 1. So, in that case, the maximum this peak will be 2 p by k. 
So, you can see that uh, the peak magnitude for the step input in a single degree unramped system is twice the static deflection and this is called the dynamic load factor because peak dynamic response divided by static response is known as DLF or uh, this dynamic load factor in short it is called DLF or dynamic amplification factor. Okay. So, dynamic amplification factor in that case is 2 all right and it occurs this T and so on because if there is no damping motion will be continued. Okay. Now, response to damp system to step input if I take this impulse response function for the damped system it is given by uh, this 1 by m omega t then sin omega d t minus tau d tau and uh, we have written this Duhamel integral and for integration purpose we convert this sin omega t into exponential uh, function. So, sin omega t can be written as e to the power i omega t minus e to the power minus i omega t divided by 2 i and uh, this after substitution of this you can get this quantity okay. and then this is p by 2 i m omega d e to the power minus j i omega n tau into e to the power i omega d t minus e to the power minus i omega d t tau into d tau. So, the limit of the integration is 0 to t and tau is a dummy variable or the variable that is taken for integration purpose. And then after putting the limit we get the response of a damped oscillator to the step input is p by k into 1 minus e to the power minus j omega n t into cos omega d t plus j omega n divided by omega d sin omega d t. And because of this damping factor that is j is appearing here and you will find the response is decaying. And because of damping also you will find that the peak magnitude is uh, less than 2. So, less than 2 whatever we have assumed earlier is now not valid here understand because of this uh, this uh, uh, this damping factor the peak magnitude now differs. Okay. So, it will be less than 2 p by k and therefore, we are getting this okay, gradually decaying response and this occurs for under dam system. Okay. Now, if I take a single degree damped oscillator freedom system with a damping and it is subjected to a rectangular pulse that means, the input is limited to the time instant uh, for the time span 0 to t. That means, after time capital T the force does not exist. So, you can see this such pulse loading is shown in figure and uh, we can see that for any time less than t the displacement what we obtained earlier will be valid this will be valid, but after time t greater than t capital T will get the system with no force then the system will vibrate under the condition of displacement and velocity that is available at t is equal to tau. So, at t is equal to tau the system is relieved from the excitation and therefore, it will undergo free oscillation for t greater than t with the initial conditions to be determined at t is equal to tau. Let at t is equal to capital T remember capital T is the uh, time total time up to which the excitation acts. So, at t is equal to tau t capital T t is equal to capital T displacement and velocity of x bracket capital T and x dot bracket capital T are to be obtained after differentiating this expression and after putting this t is equal to tau. So, displacement we can find at x at t is equal to capital T after putting 
the replacing small t by capital T and velocity after differentiating this expression and then substituting small t equal to capital T. So, this is the initial conditions for which the free response after the cessation of this pulse we have to find out. So, x t x bracket capital T that is the displacement at capital T is the initial condition. So, it is given by p by k 1 minus e to the power j omega n t cos omega d t plus j omega n divided by omega d sin omega d t and then x dot t equal to p by k j omega n e to the power minus j omega n t bracket cos omega d t plus j omega n divided by omega d sin omega d t minus e to the power minus j omega n t omega d into minus sin omega d t plus j omega n divided by omega d cos omega d t. So, the motion for t greater than t is found from free vibration of the damped system oscillator by replacing t by t minus capital T. So, now the initial conditions are found and after substituting the initial condition in the expression of the free vibration, we can now write the equation of response after t is equal to t greater than capital T. So, x t is equal to e to the power minus omega n t bracket x capital T that is the initial uh, displacement available at t is equal to capital T cos omega d t minus capital T plus x dot capital T that is the velocity available at t is equal to capital T plus j omega n x capital T divided by omega d sin omega d into t minus capital T bracket closed. Now, you can understand that here it is omega n, but here it is omega d. So, you have to be very careful to replace this omega d with omega n 1 minus j square okay, in solving the problem. Now, let us consider the system with several degrees of freedom. So, model may be there for degrees of freedom more than 1. Such example are a model of a car which is uh, idealized as a rigid beam in a half car model and which is um, supported by the suspension system and you can see here the model here a rigid beam mass is concentrated at the centroid of this uh, rigid bar and uh, the stiffness suspension stiffness of the front wheel and rear wheels are k1 and k2 and this system will undergo a vertical bouncing as well as the rotation about an axis which is transverse in the transverse direction that is perpendicular to the longitudinal axis. So, this kind of rotation is known as pitching. So, it will be subjected to the bounce and pitch that is sometimes bounce is also called hip. So, hip pitch model of the vehicle. So, this is 2 degrees of freedom system because here the x and theta are not independent. Similarly, x and theta are independent. So, therefore, it is 2 degrees of freedom. If x can be related to theta, then it will be only single degree of freedom system, but it is not the case here. Okay. Now, more than 2 degrees of freedom, say a multi storied building model, uh, the different floors have different masses which are assumed to be lumped at the center of the floor and the columns are treated as a flexible member which provides the stiffness and then it is subjected to vibration. And, uh, you can see that each mass the response is different that is swaying is different. So, therefore, in this case it is 4 degrees of freedom system, but in general it can be n degrees of freedom system. Okay. So, such uh, system are generally represented by differential equation, but these are coupled, coupled differential equation. That means, you will get the differential equation which contains in single differential equation x and theta. Similarly, in single differential equation you will get the mixing of x 1, x 2 or x t, x 3, x 3, x 4 like that. 
So, this type of coupled differential equation have to be solved simultaneously and for the stepped response or any other arbitrary cases, we may use the Duhamel's integral as we have discussed. Okay. Now, such type of system is multi degree freedom system which have finite number of degrees of freedom say n and therefore, it has n number of natural frequencies. The lowest natural frequency is known as fundamental frequency and the time period corresponding to lowest natural frequency is known as natural time period. Now, mathematical terms related to quantities of this natural frequencies and this um, natural state of vibration okay, displacement shape is related to two terms in mathematics what is known as Eigen values which corresponds to natural frequency and Eigen vectors that correspond to mode shape or the shape of the structure after displacement. During the vibration with natural frequency. Normal mode vibrations are free vibrations, always free vibrations that depend only on the mass and stiffness of the system and how they are distributed, but normal mode vibration does not depend on the exciting force. But why we are needing this normal mode vibration? Because in the theory of vibration, it is seen that normal modes or model vectors that Eigen vectors possess a very important properties. That property exists only if the mass matrix and stiffness matrix are symmetrical and the it is a stable system. So, in that case you will find that orthogonality property of the Eigen vectors can be utilized to decouple this system equation. So, when it is possible to uncouple or you can independently find n number of equation without any relation to other displacement coordinate, then we can have we can use the similar solution as we have found in single degree freedom system. So, this is one case and you can see in the subsequent slides that by a linear transformation, we can superimpose each of the coordinates to get the uh, total response of the system. Okay. So, now I will discuss this, uh, say the system equation is now represented by matrix equation. So, m is a mass matrix, m into x double dot uh, is the inertia force plus c is the damping matrix into x dot plus k x equal to f t, where the x is the response vector, it contains the displacement coordinate x 1, x 2, x 3, x n etcetera and k is a stiffness matrix which will be found after knowing the properties of k 1, k 2 etcetera and c is the damping matrix which will contain c 1, c 2 etcetera. But this uncoupling of motion that is the equation of motion is possible for undamped system or very lightly damped system and also some authors have shown that if the damping matrix or damping is proportional to mass or proportional to mass and stiffness, then the system equation can be decoupled. So, in that case orthogonality condition can be applied to this matrix C also. So, F t is the generalized uh, force or uh, force vector uh, here and it consists of the forces q 1, q 2 etcetera, which are acting on the masses m 1, m 2 up to m n. Okay. So, decoupling of the equations, equation for stable uh, system having symmetrical mass stiffness matrices can be decoupled using coordinate transformation from physical coordinates to normal coordinates via no model matrix and orthogonal property. So, now we will discuss what is model matrix, what is orthogonal property. Once a decoupled equations are formed for n number of degrees of freedom, then each equation is similar to single degree freedom system whose solution is known to us, but obtained in normal coordinates. You see that are obtained in normal coordinates, not in the actual coordinate or physical coordinate. Again transformation is necessary to come back to the physical coordinates. So, now let us see how this can be implemented. 
So, model analysis is the first step. Model analysis involves finding the natural frequencies, mode shape vectors and model matrix. So, for model analysis we assume that the C matrix damping matrix is 0, there is no damping. So, for undamped cases we can write the equation m x double dot plus k x equal to 0, but these are in the matrix form. Now, since phi vibration is harmonic, we assume that x is equal to a vector into e to the power i omega t, where omega is the natural frequency of the system. Why I have taken e to the power i omega t? Because in this case, the complex form of representation also represents the harmonic function. So, therefore, I have taken e to the power i omega t, which will simplify the calculation. So, after substituting this x equal to a e to the power i omega t, we get uh, minus omega square m plus k into a. So, this is a homogeneous equation again we get in case of free vibration. Okay. So, one possibility of solution that vector a is 0, but vector a 0 will give you the trivial solution. For non-trivial solution, we require the determinant of this matrix minus omega square m plus k, these are in the matrix form equal to 0. So, after expanding the determinant, we get a characteristic equation, uh, a polynomial with uh, omega square. For n degrees of freedom, it will be omega 2 to the power n, maximum degree of polynomial. And then it will yield different values of omega 1, omega 2, omega n. So, these are the natural frequencies. The lowest natural frequency is the fundamental frequency. Now, corresponding to each natural frequency, now we can substitute here, but we will get a homogeneous equations again. So, you will not get a unique solution, but we can find the relative magnitude of this each of the uh, elements of the vector A that will define the eigen vectors and will give the mode shapes. The eigen vectors arranged in columns gives the modal matrix. So, eigen vectors are arranged in column and E 1 is identified as the eigen vector corresponding to first natural frequency, U 2 is the eigen vector corresponding to second natural frequency like that up to a n natural frequency, this is the eigen vector. Model matrix possess following property. So, if I take a transpose of a model matrix and multiply it by this mass matrix and then again multiply with u. That means, u is a model matrix. If I pre multiply this u matrix by u t m, then due to this orthogonal property of the eigen vectors, it will be converted into a diagonal matrix. That means, this product will diagonalize the mass matrix. And similarly, but uh, if you take uh, this matrix product that u is the eigen vector r rth mode, which is an transpose of this eigen vector multiplied by mass matrix and the multiplication with eigen vector in the sth mode you will get 0 if r is equal to not s, but if r is equal to s you will get some finite quantity m r. Okay. Now, where m i is the diagonal matrix and diagonal elements m i is called the generalized mass in the ith coordinate. Similarly, uh, the other relation can be obtained with the uh, stiffness matrix. So, u transpose k u equal to k i, because it will again diagonalize. You know the relation between k and m via the natural frequency. So, again it will diagonalize this matrix and each of the diagonal element is k i, i represents the particular mode, ith mode. The property of the model matrix which diagonalize the mass and stiffness is known as orthogonal property. The product and if you see the right hand side of this, that means, this equation original equation is multiplied by u t u transpose. So, this generalized uh, force that is obtained 
as u t into f t. So, therefore, we get here the u t into f is equal to p i which is known as generalized force in the ith coordinate. Okay. Now, let us perform a coordinate transformation x equal to u into q, where q is vector of generalized coordinates. Substituting this to the matrix differential equation of the undamped system, now we get this m u q double dot plus k u q t is equal to f t. P multiply both sides by u t. So, I have p multiplied it by u t and we get u t f t by virtue of the orthogonal property. Now, this will be a diagonal matrix, this will also be a diagonal matrix. Okay. So, now the system is decoupled because of diagonalization as a result of orthogonal property. So, we can write m i q i double dot plus k i q i is equal to p i, i is equal to 1 to up to n. For a ith mode, the equation represents an equation of that single degree freedom model. So, m i q i double dot plus k i q i equal to p i. For any arbitrary excitation and system having initial conditions, we can write this q i t equal to a i sin omega i t that you are seeing here that is similar to the single degree freedom system the free response of the undamped case a i b i are the constants of integration and the particular integral due to force that is existing and p i is the generalized force. So, we have written an equation for the i th generalized coordinate. So, varying i is equal to 1, 2, 3 etcetera you can write n number of equation. In this case omega i should be replaced by 1 for first mode and second mode i is equal to 2 like that you can form n number of equation and n number of equation can be solved independently. These are not coupled now. So, you can uh, solve it independently using this formulation that we already know and then we can go back to the physical coordinates x equal to u matrix into q. So, the actual response of the system x 1, x 2, etcetera can now be obtained. Okay. Now, sometimes the results may be arbitrary if the eigenvectors are not normalized. So, normalization of eigenvectors are necessary, different procedure for normalizations exist. So, very common procedure is normalization with respect to mass matrix. Now, here in this case you take this product u r transpose into m into u s equal to 0 if r is equal to not s and if it is normalized with respect to m in such a way that it is 1, then we call these eigenvectors as normalized with respect to mass matrix. Similarly, u r t k u s can be written as 0 if r is equal to not s and equal to o omega r square if r is equal to s. So, in the matri triple matrix product we can write u t m u is a unit matrix and u t k u is a diagonal matrix with diagonal terms as omega i square. Okay. Now, with the mass normalized eigenvector, the equation of undamped system now becomes q i double dot plus omega i square q i equal to p bar i. So, p bar i is now the generalized force that is found after multiplying the force vector with the normalized eigenvector. So, I have used the different symbols to distinguish that p was earlier with and the unnormalized eigenvectors. Now, it is p bar i is the generalized force in the ith coordinate which is found after multiplying f p multiplying f vector with the normalized eigenvector u t again model matrix u t. So, therefore, we get the equation of the single degree of freedom system as we have seen in case of multi degree freedom system after the successful decoupling of the system equation. 
Now, how to implement the initial conditions? Let us see initially uh, the disturbance in the form of uh, displacement and velocity is given. So, here uh, say x t is the displacement and it is given by u into q t and it can be written in this summation form r is equal to i 2 n u r t into q r t, u r t is the vector. Similarly, putting t is equal to 0, we can write the initial condition u into q naught and u r t q r naught. Remember that we know this x no, x at 0, but not q at 0. So, therefore, we require to find this q is equal to 0. So, if we pre multiply both sides by of this equation, of this equation u r t m and using orthogonality condition of the normal modes, we get the initial modal displacement. So, initial modal displacement is now given as u r t m x at 0, we know this quantity from the given initial condition and after applying the orthogonality condition, you can see only when r is equal to s then this value will be 1, product will be 1, otherwise it will be 0. So, we get q this term only when r is equal to s, so q r 0. So, this is the initial model displacement of any mode r. Similarly, initial model velocities can be found as q r dot 0 u r t m x dot 0. We know this quantity, this quantity x dot x and x dot 0 are known. So, we can now evaluate the initial conditions in terms of generalized coordinate. Okay. Let us solve an example. We consider a 2 degree freedom system without damping. The response x 1, x 2 are required for initial condition displacements are 0 in both the coordinates, whereas the velocity x 1 dot is equal to 0 0.1 and x 2 dot is equal to 0 0.2 given the mass and stiffness matrix m is equal to 1, 2, it is a diagonal matrix. So, the diagonal elements are 1, 2 and k matrix is 2, minus 1, minus 1, 2. You may note that the diagonal elements are always positive for a stable system and the stiffness matrix is symmetric. So, first let us find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. For finding the eigenvalues, we take the help of the basic equation that we have derived minus omega square m plus k equal to 0. Now, putting the value of m and k here and evaluating the determinant and equating to 0, we get an equation 2 omega to the power 4 minus omega square plus 3 equal to 0. Solving for omega square and then taking the square root, we get omega 1 is equal to 0.7962 radian per second and omega 2 is equal to 1.5382 radian per second. Now, we will uh, find the eigenvectors in different modes. So, at first mode say this uh, is the uh, u 1 and u 2 are the eigenvectors consisting uh, comprising the elements of the first column of the model matrix that is formed by u 1, u 2 and with suffix 1. So, putting this omega 1 is equal to 0 0.9762 in the original equation, homogeneous equation and after solving, we will get the relative magnitude of u 1, u 2. Now, in that case, we assumed u 1 is equal to 1 and u 2 now becomes 1.366. Similarly, for omega 2 is equal to 1.5382, we again perform the same uh, analysis and then we get the uh, the eigenvectors in the second mode. So, u 1, u 2 now corresponds to second mode and we get this two equation and again we take the unit uh, this eigenvector that is the displacement of the uh, coordinate 1 as uh, 1 unity. So, other displacement can be found relative to this. So, it is minus 0.366. So, in one case we have found the displacement is 1.366 plus 1 and 1.366. In another case we are finding the displacement is 1 and minus 0.366. So, there is a one point where displacement is 0. 
So, that point is called as nodal point. So, if we plot the displacement, we get this uh, curve. So, that is known as mode shapes. Okay. So, response of the system, we require to find this x. So, x after linear transformation, it will become u into q. So, our first requirement is to find q. So, to find q, we require initial model displacement, which is found as q 1 at t is equal to 0 at the first mode is equal to u 1 t 1 0 0 t 2 into x naught, because these are 0, x naught is 0. So, q 1 and q 2 are 0. So, initial displacements are 0, initial model displacements are 0, initial model velocity because the velocity of the physical coordinate x 1 and x 2 exists. So, therefore, q 1 dot 0 is equal to this is the transpose of the uh, model vectors uh, at uh, mode number 1 multiplied by mass matrix into this initial velocity x dot 0. So, these are given. So, after performing this matrix product, we get q 1 dot 0 equal to 0 0.644 meter per second. Then q 2 dot 0 is similarly found, it is the eigen vector in this second mode. So, second mode it is 1 minus 0 0.366 multiplied by the mass matrix into the initial velocity and after performing the matrix product it is be becoming minus 0 0.0464 meter per second. So, these are the initial model velocities. So, now the displacement of normal coordinates is found uh, from the free vibration solution that we are already familiar with. So, q i t equal to q i uh, that is the initial displacement into cos omega i t plus q dot i at initial velocity t is equal to 0 divided by omega i into sin omega i t. Remember that omega i is the natural frequency the ith mode. So, in that case the i varies from 1 to 2. So, since the initial displacement in the normal coordinates are also 0. So, this quantity is 0 and here substituting this value at the first mode that we obtain it will 0 0.644 divided by natural frequency of the first mode is 0 0.7962 and uh, the first model frequency is 0 0.7962 radian per second. So, we get this 0 0.8088 sin 0 0.7962 t. Similarly, q 2 t is also found as first part is 0 because the initial displacement is 0 and the second part will give because q 2 dot 0 is minus 0 0464. So, we have substituted here the q 2 dot 0 and divided by omega 2. Omega 2 was 1.5382 radian per second into sin 1.5382 t. So, this is becoming minus 0 0.0302 sin 1.5382. So, we have got the generalized coordinate response. Now, we come back to the physical coordinate. So, physical coordinate is response is found by this transformation, linear transformation. So, this is the model matrix that is the eigen vector corresponding to first mode, this is the eigen vector corresponding to second mode multiplied by this normal coordinates response that we have found here earlier. So, this is this uh, q t vector and after performing this matrix multiplication, we get x 1 t as 0 0.8088 sin 0 0.7962 t minus 0 0.0302 sin 1.5382 t. Similarly, x 2 t is found as 1.1048 sin 0.7962 t plus 0.011 sin 1.5382 5382 t. So, you can note here that uh, the response of each generalized coordinate, so first coordinate and second coordinate is a combination of two frequencies, two modes. So, that is why it is in the linear system, it is known as uh, the model superposition technique for the solution of 
the damped or undamped system. Because now I have discussed the undamped system. For damped systems, uh, some modification is necessary or some assumptions regarding the damping is necessary. Okay. So, let us summarize this uh, today's lecture. In this lecture, we discussed general approach for time domain analysis for arbitrary excitation using Duhamel integral. To implement Duhamel's integral, we derived general approach for time domain analysis for arbitrary excitation. Okay. Examples of step function or step input was given. Then we discussed time domain analysis of system having several degrees of freedom with coupled differential equations. Decoupling technique was explained and expression for the response in time domain was derived. Finally, an example of two degree of freedom system, undamped system subjected to initial conditions was solved that is free vibration response was solved for two degrees of freedom system. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.